Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. This is the second video from the second chapter. The topic is conventional vacuum tubes. In this video, we are essentially going to see what exactly are the limitations of the conventional vacuum tubes so that the need to have some modifications and introduce the microwave tubes for microwave engineering in this particular video. In the previous video, we were introduced to the microwave linear beam tubes. So how exactly the magnetic plane of the microwave is linear to that of the electron beam running from cathode to anode we have seen. So in this family, it is very, very essential to first of all see the limitations and then proceed forward to see the principle of operation and the working next for the microwave tubes of this family. So let us see the details. <music> So here we start for the conventional vacuum tubes in the previous chapter introduction to microwaves. The microwave devices were introduced and also I have shown you some photographs of the traditional the conventional vacuum tubes. So in this family a vacuum tube is there and the electrodes with respect to the number of electrodes the names of the vacuum tube devices are there. So for two electrodes it has vacuum tube diode for three electrodes. That means very first of all, initially we have the cathode and anode, cathode negatively charged and the anode which is also said to be the plate positively charged. In addition to these two, if you have the third one that is grid here, so that time it is vacuum tube triode. If we increase one more grid for some another purpose, it will be a vacuum tube tetrode, then vacuum tube pentode. So this way, this vacuum tube family is there. So from this vacuum tube family, we take vacuum tube triode for consideration and we'll see few of the limitations if we try to operate these conventional vacuum tube devices at higher frequencies as the microwaves are having the higher frequency ranges 1 gigahertz to that of the 300 gigahertz. So here we shall be taking some simple circuit with respect to the vacuum tube triode. So here the circle we assume to be the vacuum tube here. Now for vacuum tube triode it should be having three terminals here. So very first of all the terminal number one I name that is plate here. So it should be on the upward side. So this is the terminal and I name it capital P for plate here. To the opposite side there is another terminal that is cathode which is negatively charged. So here I mention capital K for the cathode that is having the heating element to generate free electrons. And for the vacuum tube triode for plate cathode there is another terminal that is grid here. So the grid is shown on this particular side. So this is the grid here. So for grid sometimes which is also called as gate also I mention the symbol capital G here, capital K for the cathode here. So these are the three electrodes. So I draw these three dots which are acting as the base pins. So whatever the interaction occurs inside the vacuum tube, especially the triode is generating some current because of the potentials applied to the electrodes. So whatever the output is generated whatever the input is provided so that is at these base pins now this device is in some kind of circuitry so that the intended application will be fulfilled here so while we connect this device with some another devices the actual connection occurs from some another location that need to be taken so what is actually in between the base pin and that location that I will definitely get it cleared here. So that location we call electrode position here or electrode pin here. So suppose this is the location for the plate terminal. This is the location for the gate terminal. This is the location for the cathode terminal. In between the base pin location and the electrode pin location, there is a drop by the inductance here. So for the gate here, the inductor can be shown like this and for the gate or grid you say 
the inductance can be denoted here capital L suffix G I mentioned here. For the plate terminal, the inductor I draw here and mention it as capital L suffix P. For the cathode, the inductor can be drawn here. This is capital L suffix K here. So this is drop of the inductance. Another thing is that there is capacitance to be taken into the consideration as there are three electrodes. So in between the plate terminal and that of the cathode terminal, there is a capacitance that we can show. So here for the base pin terminals, I draw here the representation of capacitor. So this capacitance I name with the simple capital C suffix P K here P for the plate and K for the cathode here. So for the capacitance shown into the diagram here we keep the symbol capital C suffix P G here. Now there is another capacitance in between the grid terminal and that of the cathode terminal that I can show you. So here it will be the effect of capacitance. So C, G, K we can mention. So in the diagram for vacuum tube triode, you see the three inductances LP, LK and LG, whereas the three capacitances are there C, P, K, C, G, P and C, G, K here. Now as we try to operate the example vacuum tube triode onto the higher frequencies for the microwave range, it is offering few of the limitations. The very first limitation we shall see that limitation is called as inter electrode capacitance effect. The name is inter electrode because the capacitance is offered in between two electrodes. So for capacitance, the reactive capacitance is given by the formula capital Xc for the reactive capacitance. So this is equal to 1 upon 2 pi Fc. So in this formula, the reactive capacitance which is a form of impedance opposition some kind of to the flow of current. So this reactive capacitance this is actually having inverse relation to that of the frequency also inverse relation to the capacitance value denoted by capital C. So here we want frequency to be increased. So if we make frequency increased so from this relation we shall be obtaining Xc to be reduced here. So if we come back to the diagram here, here the reactive capacitance between the two terminals is getting reduced. So if the frequency we keep on again increasing, there will be the instance where there will be very minimum reactive capacitance which is supposed to be negligible. So it leads to shorting of the electrodes. So especially the plate we maintain at positive potential, the cathode we maintain at negative potential. If this capacitance is getting negligible, the reactive capacitance is negligible. So there is a chance to have shorting of these two electrode pins. So there won't be the proper working of the vacuum tube device here. So on operating this particular vacuum tube on higher frequency, this limitation in the respect to the capacitance is seen here. So this is called as inter electrode capacitance effect. So if this vacuum tube device is operated at higher frequencies, the limitation is seen in terms of inter electrode capacitance effect. This effect is also abbreviated as IEC. So after completion of understanding IEC, there is another effect that is called as a lead inductance effect. So lead inductance effect I abbreviate as capital L capital I. So let us see what exactly the lead inductance effect is. As we had this relation for the reactive capacitance with respect to the frequency and that of the capacitance here, we have the relation for reactive inductance. So reactive inductance is denoted by capital X suffix L here. So XL is equal to 2 pi F L here. So 2 and pi are the constants here. F is the frequency, L is the inductance here. 
so here we want the frequency to be increased so if we increase the frequency in turn as it is directly proportional to that of the xl here xl will also be increased here so if you get back to the diagram the inductances are in between the base pin location and electrode pin location so this is the base pin location for the grid base pin location for the cathode base pin location for the plate and these are the electrode pin locations in between the inductances are there so if xl the reactive inductances are increased there will be a drop in between these two positions so whatever the output that we have achieved because of the interaction inside the vacuum tube that particular output will be having a drop in between the path while we connect this device to another devices to form a system and there will be a reduced gain so this limitation is called as lead inductance effect now these two limitations we have seen now what are the chances to minimize these particular limitations so for inter electrode capacitance effect we get back to the relation here we have to definitely go for higher frequencies as we should be working with the microwaves so we tried increasing the frequency here but xc reduced we don't want xc to get reduced here so that the another chance is that in this particular relation 2 pi 1 these are the constants here this is the capacitance if we increase frequency xc is reducing but if we try to increase capacitance so in that case there is a chance that xc will be maintained at some desired level so that the working operation of the device should not get end so here we get back to the relation so in this relation as we try to increase the frequency the reactive capacitance reduced and it leaded to the shortening of the electrodes that is very very unwanted so we don't want to get xc to be very much reduced so to increase the xc there is another option with us to vary the value of the capacitance so we want the xc to be increased as it is having inverse relation to that of the capacitance value so capacitance should be reduced so for reduction of capacitance we get back to the diagram the capacitance is with respect to the three terminals we have the three types that is cpg cpk cgk we want to get reduced here so for reduction of them there is one chance to use smaller electrodes or to use more distance between the electrodes now the lead inductance effect is to be avoided so that we have seen that xl so we get to the relation here xl is equal to 2 pi fl we tried increasing frequency as it is having the direct relation so xl was also increased here we want to get it reduced so that there should not be a more loss in between the base pin location and the electrode pin location so the case is to vary the inductance here so to reduce the value of xl l should also be reduced here now if you see for the capacitance we have been using the shorter electrodes or increasing the distance between the electrodes here for inductance to get reduced here we shall be using a large size electrodes without base pins so these are the remedies to reduce the inter electrode capacitance effect and the lead inductance effect along with these two effects there is the third effect that is called as transit time effect now for transit time what is the definition of transit time it is the time required by the electron to travel from one terminal to another terminal so that the working procedure of the device will get completed so here in our example the electron is traveling from cathode to plate here so here i denote the transit time by the symbol tau here so that the electron can get started his journey from the cathode terminal and finally reach the plate so this is the transit time now if the vacuum tube triode is operating at the low frequency so it is the case that when 
the time moment we have provided input to it and the time moment we are obtaining the output. We are obtaining the output the moment the electron reaches the plate current. So there it is a time delay. So for low frequency signals that was okay. But when we go for high frequency signal, we provided the input but electron is not yet reached at the plate terminal in between several cycles of the signal have got passed as we are using the high frequency signal. So that I can show you with the help of one diagram. Here we shall be showing a small frequency signal here, low frequency signal. Let us say this is the low frequency signal for marking the references. I take the help of the two axes. This is for marking the amplitude and this is for marking let us say time here. Now on the another hand with the same axis here we take high frequency signal to comparison. So let us say this is high frequency signal. Consider the symmetry of the diagram. Now suppose tau is the transit time. So here I mark suppose this is the transit time for the vacuum tube triode. So here this is the time moment we started to operate the device. We have applied the potential and this is the time moment after the transit time it is giving us the output. So in between the signal is there but there is no output. This much of signal will be having some kind of delay, some kind of losses we can say here. But when we operate it onto the high frequency signal like this, the same time delay as we have not changed our device here, we shall be representing for the transit time tau here. So if you mark this, you can see here, this is one cycle, this is another cycle. Two cycles of the signal have got passed and then it has been producing the output. So this is not the desired operation of the device here. So to limit this particular transit time effect, the remedy can be that there should be a minimization of distance between the two electrodes. Because if you relate the distance covered with respect to the time, with respect to the velocity, we have the relation here. The relation can be given as tau is equal to d upon v0 or in turn we take v0 is equal to d upon tau here. So v0 is the velocity of the electron. This is velocity. d is the distance to be traveled. So this is the distance from cathode terminal to that of the plate terminal or anode terminal and tau is the time duration. So here you can see that the transit time is having a direct relation with that of the distance covered. So to minimize the transit time effect, we should be minimizing the distance between the electrodes. But earlier we have seen the inter electrode capacitance effect in lead inductance effect. So in those effects, what remedies to minimize those effects we have seen? to increase the electro distance so that the IEC can be reduced here. Here we want the size of the device smaller so that the electrodes will get come closer. So there is no proper solution we have to find a trade off, we have to find a balance. If we are trying to reduce the transit time effect, there will be increase into the inter electrode capacitance effect and it will be vice versa. So this was the transit time effect we have seen as we have denoted the transit time by tau here, it will be quite convenient to give you the proper formulation how exactly the transit time can be measured. Because in the subsequent lectures we shall see how exactly there is a modification from the earlier vacuum tubes to that of the microwave tubes by using this transit time. Instead of fighting to have reduction into the distance, we have used this particular transit time with the help of velocity modulation. So here we have the relation tau is equal to d upon v0 already the terms are explained to you. Now when the electron is traveling from cathode to anode initially it has been provided the potential energy that is getting converted into the kinetic energy. 
so the potential energy can be denoted as 1 e into v0 if v0 is the potential applied between cathode and plate e is the charge of the electron this is the potential energy whereas the kinetic energy will be denoted by 1 upon 2 m into here v0 square v0 is the velocity of the electron m is the mass of the electron so this is the formulation for kinetic energy this is the representation of potential energy at the equilibrium here the two are equated here so therefore from this equation we can get v0 is equal to under root 2 into e v0 divided by m here in the previous chapter we have taken the charge of the electron divided by mass of the electron both are the constant values so e by m ratio is the constant and the value can be substituted 1.759 into 10 to the power 11 here now we have given the formulation for v0 that we can substitute here and finally we can write the transit time tau will be given by it will be d divided by square root of here it will be twice e into v0 divided by m so i outline this particular formula this is for calculation of transit time so the three effects we have seen the next effect is gain bandwidth limitation for gain bandwidth limitation i can explain you for any of the electron device if you find the product of gain with respect to the bandwidth it is equal to a constant that can also be proved with the help of a simple derivation but because of time limitation i just give it as suppose the gain can be denoted by capital G and the bandwidth can be denoted by BW here the product of the two will be equal to some constant value so as the right hand side of the equation is constant if you want the device to be used for the application where gain requirement is higher so you shall be making changes adjusting the things so that the gain will be increased in turn the bandwidth will be reduced here your device will be very very selective to the frequency values here so it cannot be operated onto the wide range of frequency signals if the application is as such you want the device that is operatable onto the higher range of frequency values so you want the bandwidth to be higher so in that case there will be a reduction into the gain here because the product of the two is observed to be constant here so this is also another limitation of the conventional vacuum tubes now in addition to inter electrode capacitance effect lead inductance effect transit time effect and gain bandwidth limitation there is another limitation that we can name by the subtitle effect to rf losses now if we are using the device onto the higher frequency values then if the size of the device is relating to the wavelength of the signal so that time there is a chance of radiation here that we shall be discussing here so here for the device the effective area denoted by a suffix e double f is having inverse relation to the square root of the frequency so here we give 1 upon under root f and the resistance here that can be having a relation with the resistivity rho the length of the device and the effective area to the denominator here so from these two relations the a effective is having inverse relation to that of the square root of frequency we can conclude that here r that is equal to rho into l into square root of frequency so in short the frequency is having direct relation to the resistance value so if you say about the losses the losses we generally denote by i square r so capital l if representing the loss here it is directly proportional to that of the resistance value so if you go on increasing the frequency value in turn it will increase the resistance value and as the resistance value will be increasing there will be the increase into the losses of rf type so this is 
effect due to the RF losses. So these were the various kind of limitations with respect to the use of conventional vacuum tubes as it is operated onto the microwave frequencies. So there is essential modification required to these conventional vacuum tubes and then there will be the family of microwave tubes. So in this chapter we are looking for the microwave linear beam tubes. So by the next lecture we shall be addressing the next topic that is called as re-entrant cavities. In the previous video we have seen the classification that in the first family of clistons we have the use of resonant cavities here. So let us see what exactly the re-entrant cavities are. So I hope you are definitely benefited by the knowledge we share for our subject microwave engineering. For some more information on this subject or some others you can subscribe to EKEDA channel. Thank you.